Good afternoon. Uh, we welcome to the second session of debate 2018 when we battle out with brain is a computer or brain is not a computer. So we standing on the side of brain is a computer, we start with the our position of uh, keeping ourselves motivated with this concept of brain is a computer. And starting with this, uh, I came up, uh, I found one thing uh, very interesting while skimming up and like making this presentation that human nature changed in 1910, 1910 and it has been stated by a uh, well known author Virginia Woolf. And it says that about the consciousness as a narrative device is a book uh, which is also very popular <coughs> in Amazon. This statement I wrote purposely, the reason I had was when we compare brain with a computer, we compare with our current standing of how our brain is right now and we compare this to the computer when we say that there is still a gap, the gap of evolution when brain, when man matured enough to start thinking and learning when computer came later up. So we say that yes, computer is speeding up fast and will slowly will reach the level of brain but yes, we sometimes need to think back, a step back and think that yes, when we were young and when computers are in their young generation, what is the similarity or commonalities they both possess? Second statement which was also taken by our Anton Chekhov and he's a very famous uh, philosopher, Spanish philosopher. And uh, he said that a man will become better when you show what he, he is like something similar to what, what when you say that computer will perform better when you tell computer what he has to do or what the computer has to do. Keeping these two things in thought, we build up our evidences. The first thing we talk about is the commonalities. Secondly, we'll talk about how we can rest our back on the shoulders of cognitivism and philosophism. Then we talk about what is intelligence. Slowly we we'll move into the computationalism, the idea of how the computer is a scientist and how the computer, computational tongue thinks about brain as a computer. Then we give an evidence of neuroscience and cognitive science which have been largely contributed by Shriyansh. And uh, the lastly we talk about what's the inspiration from brain. Starting with the uh, debate, the first commonalities that I present is uh, since brain has a sensory input, so does a sensory input a computer has. We talk about brain has diseases and syndrome and so the computer also has viruses and stuck has, have like they do stuck in programs. And interestingly brain has stimulus and response, short term memory and long term memory. So does a laptop, a computer has a cache, hard drive, RAM. So these are the uh, like more visible commonalities that you can see when you compare brain with the computer. Another thing that brain also consumes a large amount of energy in your mental activity or mental processes. Something similar to what laptop consumes uh, power input. And lastly also the main commonality that's visible is that heart uh, pumps blood into the brain and that's how you say the you measure your brain activity through fMRI which is nothing but the bold values which are blood oxygen level decompos uh, like uh, decomposition values that you see in fMRI signals that's how basically the values of blood something similar to what when you when a power is pumped into the laptop or computer for it to function now coming up to another set of uh, after having the commonalities um, is like I'm just thinking like it's a debate and I think silence is a crime over here and uh, anyone has any objection about the commonalities that I post. Okay next. We go into cognitism and philosophism resting ourselves into the theory of people who are rightly be considered as uh, computer phobic by Daniel Dennett. So we start with first guy who the Dr. Karl Pribram who is a neuroscientist and he says that 
uh, computer are, are basically our holographic storage and they are stores uh, information in are like they use laser beams to store information and something similar to what brain has brain is also considered as a holographic device a holographic system that also consumes instead of laser beams we take optical signals from retina signals from our nervous systems or other neuro or other uh, neighborhood neurons coming up to the next thing uh, Dr. Daniel Bernadette states that the brain evolved culturally and socially with memes. And I hope everyone knows about memes. And if no, so like I will just give an introduction of meme. So meme is basically a way of when you pass on the information between a person and another person <clears throat> without having a connection in between. So it's how you culturally evolve how you grow yourself, how your mind grows. This is what he told us, like brain evolves culturally and socially with meme, and mind is a software for brain. And uh, Roger Penrose and Daniel Dennett, which, we, which I consider as the, like the brother on the same thought, states that language is what brain understand, and something similar to what programming language a computer understand. Along with this line, uh, Richard Dawkins states that words are semi-autonomous informational structure and are essentially part of the meme in which the brain communicates with your neighborhood. So if I'm standing and I have another guy standing in me, in front, in, uh, beside me, we, have, we can exchange thoughts and, those, and exp expressions through language or through words which are semi-autonomous and they don't have any structure. The structure comes or forms in the brain. And lastly, they also, uh, he stated that brain is an English virtual machine, which I wrote in a short form as EVM, on the neck top. After this, we came up with a, con uh, with a summarization that a brain requires math, music, science, for its survival and it subsequently have the idea of uh, survival in, in, in itself. Going further, we say that there is a computation. Brain requires music for survival? Uh, brain, brain has, uh, so brain understands maths, mathematics, music and science. Okay. So these are the preliminary structure how we have like a growth like a, like a, a little uh, little baby they started having small uh, tons tones of music and we grow with ma learning mathematics science and these are form the essential computational part of the brain what, what about uh, art yeah art is a physical form of a music no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly listen listen to what you say yeah art is a uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm Music not joking art. at all. Music is art. Music is art. Okay, music is art. No, art. it's not the same, I'm sorry. Why? Art is a form of music? Yeah, art is a form of music. <laughs> a music is a way of con uh, conveying something okay, and no, art is a form. He was being very good until now. <laughs> <laughs> Who is his partner? Who are his partners? Oh, why? So what do you want to say? Not right, I won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, why, why these three? Yeah. And how come, uh, no, this point is just not coming out at all. And how come math and science uh, became essential to them? Uh, so hmm. that's what uh, is told that we need to start learning. But we kids are not exposed to math and science from the beginning until their brain is up to some level? Yes, but we start something similar to mathematics. I'm not talking about a high level mathematics. It can be simply <coughs> a numbers. Now it's also a constitutes of mathematics. Okay. That's what we know. Kids are first taught about how to talk, how to express. So mm -hmm. do you want to say, make a point that um, learning how to express, like how, how do they start expressing by crying if they need something? Mm -hmm. Is that somehow similar to maths and science? 
I am uh, mostly talking about what goes into the brain is mathematics, science and music. And this is how the relevance comes into the brain of different sections of the brain that have each and every part of mathematics or constitution part of mathematics, science and music. No, I mean, uh, I would say that, uh, so what is, what is, what is the music to do with survival per se, as in survival is a very basic thing, like living. What does music have to do? There are a lot of people in the world uh, who are not exposed to uh, any formal science whatsoever. There are a lot of people in the uh, who uh, are part of a culture or a religion where music is not allowed. And so, it's so, so you know, and, but they are surviving. So, Rakshad, the thing is that in survival, when I say that survival means like there is some kind of science and mathematics that's involved in survival. So, and it, it is a derivative form of mathematics and sciences, not a something that's completely coming up. So, that's what they, uh, they talk about. That survival is something that's originated from mathematics and science. And it's not a kind of that something comes up from very much out of flash and it has no background. It just doesn't make sense to me. No, no, no. What he's trying to say is that survival can be modeled by mathematical equations. Yes. That's the yeah. way I interpret it. Yeah. Yeah. But yes. Yes. No. 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 That's that's a different point. Okay. I, I I want you our to defend because you are part of this thing, right? Uh -huh. So defend. Yeah. Our survival strategy may not be exactly modeled by mathematical equations, or mathematics may not model survival, or for that matter, whole brain. However, it can model, model um, it in some way or some part of it. And as far as it can, you can um, expect machine to understand it or you can make machine understand that. So, yeah, if we understand how exactly survival is working in human brain, uh, you may be able to model it in, in mathematical terms and... Uh, yeah, but, so you have a music. Yeah. And or you have, yeah, you're, you're going to say math, and uh, your body is, uh, music, you know, uh, uh, as flesh-eating bacteria. Now tell me what... <laughs> what <laughs> body is I'm, different. I mean... Your uh, brain, flesh-eating bacteria will eat your brain. I mean, with, with, with music, I think that he is referring to a baby when it is born. It is already customized to the heartbeat and the temperature of the mother maybe and then whenever the baby is brought uh, near its mother then the music and the temperature would help <coughs> him identify its mother or boss okay so uh, what, what does that do with survival per se? Um, now um, you are outside the you know womb you have to survive differently than what you were in the when you were in the womb uh, yeah, but but that 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 has the sounds of mother. I can I I can say that comes under music club. So do say and, and uh, they help identifying uh, 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 safe places right? for the human, uh, maybe, uh, which would help its survival. <laughs> That's very imaginative. No, <laughs> other groundless. Okay. I think Nini has a question. Sorry, it's question. How does this relate to computer? Brain being a computer. Yeah. So, <coughs> brain, uh, let's just I say that mathematics, music, science and survival are some form of keeping brain computational. Similarly, mathematics and science are also part of what computer comes in, into play and yeah, the survival and one, one more theory that comes into mind is everything that can be modeled in a mathematical equation which by far everyone in this uh, like the group of people of who are philosophers and who are cognitivists they say that every, everything that can be modeled in terms of some mathematical equation can be mapped to a computer and everything in this world has some kind of an equation some kind of rules if something that doesn't falls into the rules doesn't comes up in the human terms or doesn't comes in the human nature so so let's say i I, I hate you. How is that a mathematical? 
it's definitely I'm not that kind of like a very <laughs> definite mathematician, but yes, it can be modeled in a what it can be modeled. I mean, it can be modeled uh, like I mean, it can be devoid like of any any meaning. It can be modeled like a I can syntax that hate into it. Semantics also with that. Yeah, but I, that'll so, capture hate. So that or and and, and 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 I distinguish between I hate him and I despise you. I mean, how are you going to distinguish between the two? Other than so that, the label. That expresses your emotions, and your emotions can be modeled. Yes. How how does a computer? You are arguing that brain is you know, com, brain is a computer, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as yes. far as you can model that expression no, or but emotions. No, brain is okay. So my brain has emotion. That means you show me the computer that has the same emotion, and that I yes. can uh, that computer can express that emotion. Yeah. How does computer express the emotion? Well, if you can model that emotion, emotion then uh, you can make a whole... No, I, you this know... This is a I mean, kind of a so, way of... So, you can so, so, so yesterday was Valentine's Day and I went and hugged my wife. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 you know, what would you do here? Maybe <laughs> 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 Emotion of love. So that's one's How perspective of emotion. That in computer, I am not aware of research for that, and and the reason I understand for that not being done is that not being necessary. If not somebody, necessary. I mean, why? I mean, how? I mean, you know, how? What is a brain without emotion? No, no, no. That's not the point. The point is why you want your machine to express yeah. uh, love to another machine. But the people who are depressed and I want. I mean, if you are to, uh, you know, you are to express love to whosoever you choose to. Love. Human can express love to whoso. Human chooses. Now, brain should also express love to whosoever it then chooses. Yeah. So, but if you want to express that feeling, if you want to meet a person operating that computer good, if you want to make that person feel good, then there are other ways. So, um, if, so let's say a chatbot. If a chatbot is able to understand your emotion and, and, and behave accordingly, then it is responding to your emotion. And as far as it, it, it can do that, um, you are fine with it. If you want that chatbot to, to be more expressive, uh, more uh, expressing itself more dominantly over you and all those things, um, I'm not sure, but probably you may be able to do that. Um, so, just yeah, one so, thing. Uh, uh, since we are on the, we are on debate the same thing, so we are giving that the, <laughs> <laughs> the computer is afraid of what I think of it. No, 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 that means... You don't need to model love. No, no, no. <laughs> that a chat I mean, is able to respond to your emotion. How did it do that? It, you did not model emotion into that. So actually, I agree with his point uh, to the extent that um, maybe a computer not able to understand the emotions and so on, this, 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 like, it sheds a light on on um, us not being able to model emotions in the computer. It's not the limitations of the computer per se. It's a limitation of our ability to model those emotions. Yeah. See what I mean? I mean, if a, if a human being is able to understand emotion, then there is a mathematical modeling that so, happens so, in the, so, in the so human so being. That that un maybe un that understand. maybe now. Let's start there. Maybe now you yourself uh, gave me the argument that indeed the uh, uh, brain is not a computer. The reason is the following. Let's, let's decipher your argument. You say that we are unable to model. That means you are saying that brain is pretty much more complex and uh, it's just too difficult, uh, it's just impossible to model it. Uh, it's, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. I mean, like, before the I would like to say here. something here. So, I disagree with the fact that we haven't done now, we might be doing it in future because since till now it's not a necessity. Any argument that we raise, that the brain is not a computer we raise, can be put off by the argument that since we have not done it now, it doesn't mean that it is impossible. 
So I uh, disagree with that fact. So what they are basically saying is we don't have a necessity and that's why we are not doing it. In a similar way, we can also argue that the brain has evolved so far and by the time you complete all these things, the brain will further evolve and we can still say that the brain cannot be modeled as a computer. So that true. argument, I, I, I think but that the natural yeah, evolution is more than the... Of years, yeah. but, uh, but of course, you look for a neural network too. To model I, I, yeah, but neural network I, 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 don't think so. I don't think so brain is going to evolve more because actually... <laughs> 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 I, 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 I have evolved in the sense uh, I'm saying uh, physically, yeah, physically. Uh, I mean, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, means we we evolve in a way like we, we stop evolving now. We started we, augmenting. Did we start evo evolving now? Uh, we, we didn't stop evolving. I mean, we started e augmenting things to our brain. That's oh, what. Sorry, the, I don't. The distinction between evolution and augmentation. Uh -huh. Aug e augmentation, I mean by like uh, right now uh, we are adding things. To ourselves. Why so is that, that not part of evolution? That's part of evolution, but uh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> that. let, let, let's, let's explore one interesting thing though here. I think it comes down to the very fundamental issues of uh, representation. Yeah. So, um, we have, we humans, and you know, our brains are able to understand <coughs> emotions. Um, and that we uh, are able to tell our body if necessary when I hug somebody that means my brain has asked my body to participate in this action and then um, uh, you know we uh, I express that uh, so I use the body uh, the brain uses the body to you know uh, carry out that emotion um, Traditional computer could not do that, but now chatbot can do that verbally. You can verbally hug, say I hug you, and you can have a potentially a robot, and robot can you know hug you. And people are developing those kind of robots. They are currently working on um, you know uh, robots to take care of elderly people and talk to them softly and you know keep them company. And those are you know you can say that this is a path towards that. The question is. Are those simply the, the things that you can possibly do that is like brain? Example of simulation or emulation, or are they the same? That is a very important distinction to try and make. Okay, are you in trying to understand the thing? If you are to, if you want to prove equality, uh, that you can't. I believe that you would not be able to. Prove, you can't through equality but just saying that it is similar in some sense in a limited sense it's not this it's not the same in that if you know that a, um, uh, a robot is hugging you would it have the same uh, emotional response as it would be or that by that of a person in flesh with your relationship hugging you Right? So, uh, the other thing is, so I, when we talk about emotion, and we have to use label. We have to use label, I'm angry or I'm, uh, you know, uh, and uh, we may have um, the label in a very simple form that person is happy or angry. We may have um, the representation in some sort of vector form, some sort of, you know, Training. So many times when I'm exposed, the label given is anger. When I expose with this thing, the label given is happy. Hence, and I when I capture that either as a vector or as a matrix or as a some uh, any any mathematical representation, I would say I'm approximating that in that the approximately that is that label. Is that the same as having a biological? Phenomena, <coughs> or is it an approximation of some sort? Right? So, uh, and I think in my, I believe that it's important when you want to make an argument, you want to make that distinction very clear. If you say it's like a brain, 
you know, computer is like a brain, that's a different thing. Or you're going to say brain is like a computer, that's a different thing. <coughs> is brain as a different, uh, you know, uh, 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 thing? You, uh, different, I guess, what you call, you have to meet a different level of criteria. The, um, the, the argument is that um, two people are talking, let's say, Okay. And there's, there's a very well-known term uh, called semantic gap. Yeah. And two people are talking, one person says something and one person understands. In, one, in generally, it is believed that there's always a gap between what this person actually says and which this person actually understands. The argument that I was trying to make last night, and if you read that uh, debate and all that, is that we have technologies. Computers help us with those technologies, like NLP. You look at NLP technology, you say, okay, uh, oh, this person talked about this word. The word is Shweta. And uh, it so happens that in this case, that Shweta is mapped to that physical being that Shweta. So first of all, Shweta as a word is what computer has. But you are not talking about that word S W E T A. You are talking about that person in flesh. Right? How much of an approximation there is of this label Shweta versus what that person is? When I look at Shweta and when I think about it intellectually. Compare what that means to a computer having a label Shweta. Now suppose I start to enrich that. I give the computer a photograph of Shweta. I give the computer a voice of Shweta. And so computer can start building stronger and stronger representation of Shweta. How far will it take for the computer to actually um, have a comprehensive, complete representation as well as a meaningful and as substantial as another human might have. And remember the fact that the way I think of Shweta, the way Shweta's husband thinks of Shweta and with uh, Shweta's mother thinks of Shweta are totally different. Same human being. That those nuances, where are those? How are they going to be captured? Can they be captured? And it is, understand the relativism that it brings in. That understanding Sweta is entirely different thing for me versus Deepak versus, <laughs> I remember, <laughs> versus uh, uh, her mother, right? And um, uh, 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 where, are we, where are we here with regards to building that level of, you know, the, and the depth of, and the nuance of that representation. You are perfectly okay to argue in your side, this side, that uh, brain is a computer, that we are at a state of evolution and we are quickly going there and we can do it. But that needs to be, you know, and I doubt that you can, you know, I, the idea is not to say today you have reached that. But, you know, for, are we actually were arguing is that? Uh, the, 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 we are debating the issue of singularity, right? And when somebody says, you know, singularity will be reached by in 25 years, that's what we are debating. Yes, we are becoming richer and richer and richer. What used to be, uh, think about a computer 25 years ago. I would only be happy to call, you know, use the label Shweta there. Today's computer I can give reasonably easy all the media that will help me represent Sweta a little better. And yet it is nowhere close to capturing a uh, variety of things as in interpretation, you know, in, in the, uh, you know, uh, uh, differential, you know, interpret, you know, views of Sweta that we should, humans have towards Sweta. So that relative, relative representation, there isn't much that I've seen along that line, right? 
uh, and then beyond that, the, we can even further go into the you know more more challenging issues. Yes. I think first of all, I think you are biased towards uh, the <laughs> opinion that goes against us. <laughs> no, I, I no. <laughs> well, no. Yesterday, I uh, in the day for class, I was uh, I was arguing the other round. I hope you noticed that. Uh, but uh, and in fact, I even gave you the uh, you know uh, uh, the the uh, points of argument in my saying that. So I didn't you know I didn't say no. It is not the case. I said that's what you need to demonstrate. That's what you need to argue about. So arguments can be this simplistic. Okay, but, but the other point is, I can say the same points about a human being. Not all of us have the same capabilities or the same cognitive, uh, you know, uh, uh, abilities and so on. And you can see even up to some retards that who cannot even think for themselves. Uh, to different perspectives, like you can see that even uh, grown-up men, they cannot eat. They need somebody to feed them, right? Sure. So you can see all of these perspectives that they cannot even understand what is, what's a hug that you mentioned, right? So it's exactly the same as a computer. I can teach the computer to all of these things, and I, was, I, I might have missed some of the uh, parameters of a model that made that computer doesn't understand things well as other computers. Uh, also, following that argument, um, you exemplified that whether a computer can understand hug and behave in the same way for elderly people, for whoever it's been developed. Elderly. Elderly, yeah. <laughs> so, um, for that, even different humans behave in different ways in those situations. Sure. So, so show me, I mean, you, you are certainly can yeah. argue that. Yes. I, I can reach uh, you know five level of uh, five year of human, and uh, yes, I'll characterize. Five, but you need to base Not only it that in way. In terms of the ages, but even the humans who are at the similar age, mm. um, they behave in different mm -hmm. in different way. But mm -hmm. what we want that's exactly the point, though. Yeah, so yeah. where is that where is that finesse yeah. here in the argument? Exactly. So what we want machine to understand or learn is the best behavior possible. Not a behavior no. that can be um, that no. that would be there by no. by any human being. No, 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 no. The, let me argue. Let me tell you. You, you certainly can't. Uh, you know. You certainly shouldn't be asking for best behavior possible, because then we will never have any novel. No, I. By best I mean, possible. I mean, I, I, I have, I have a novel. I have, you know, this thing. Uh, talking about two friends. One is a good friend and a bad friend. I mean, then only I can talk about things that matter to human. So there's nothing about the best behavior. He has to have best behavior and first behavior, and good behavior and somewhere in the middle behavior. That you have to accept that when you are in that, that level of uh, humanity if you want to get to this argument. And that is the that is the core of discussion. You really have to argue that computers can reach that level. Yeah, as I, as you saw that um, as you saw the example uh, in that movie of how. Uh, you know, a machine interacting with a human will it starts to understand the emotion. How that machine, you know, falls in love with a human, and the uh, and it changes that machine's behavior, mm -hmm. and it changes the decisions that the machine makes or the software makes. Those, those are human, uh, 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 you know, um, features that the machine is starting to demonstrate, and that's why. They become good examplers, not the simplistic arguments, uh, you know, uh, that I'm seeing so far yet. Yeah, but if you give the training data in a way that it behaves, the machine behaves in certain way for certain situation, that then it will it will learn it accordingly, right? Why why do you think why do you think that it it won't be able to learn? That? No, but this is this is the that's the, that's the challenge. So take an example. Suppose I train uh, uh, something in one uh, between uh, about relations between two two humans. Now, the same two humans put on a boat with no food and water are going to act differently. <laughs> and they were never trained for that thing. Yeah, but they were trained in a way by having different environments. 
But humans, even if not trained in the environment, I've never been the boat, and I'm now for the first time going, you know, you know, have to go, you know, my, my ship had a crash and, you know, went down, and I, I'm on the lifeboat, and I'm going with, you know, three other guys, and you, there are enough historical, actually, accounts of what has happened. Yeah, but if you put a person who has uh, lived in, uh, in, in jungle with a different set of survival skills, be in that boat with a person who has lived in a city with a different set of survival skills, they will behave differently, but that difference in behavior is due to their environment. And they made the association of whatever they, 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 they had, that whatever the experience they had while they were being brought up with that situation. So that association is something that we humans are doing much better than the machines are doing right now. And, 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 and it simply, if I put it in simple terms, then that association is not, if can be represented by simple in terms of numbers or some correlation, then maybe even machine is able to understand that if this is this situation, I can connect it with my past, this of one of my past situation or experience, and I may be able to do that. It's just that we don't have such a richer representation to make the machine learn about those things. I think he's talking about survival of the fittest kind of situation. Yeah, so survival, how, how do you get the survival skills? You but have experience. No, let's say uh, a, a one-year-old does not have any survival skill. Um, you are growing up and you are learning based on, uh, let's say you went to school and there, due to different experiences, you learned something. You are able to relate that with so, the situation that you get in the future. So, as a one-year-old, I never experienced this uh, kind of situation. But when a dog was running behind me, I can't. Yeah, but a one-year-old does not know whether he needs to run or not. But when something that weird is coming towards you, obviously he will run, right? Nobody taught me to run. Actually, it's coming towards me and I obviously run. That's, that's, not, that's not something that, about the brain, right? That's particular time. Exactly. Yeah. Any that's it. Any creature. Any brain. So the brain, we are talking about yeah, yeah, but the part. Even the brain. Any creature has a okay. yeah, So that's it. something you're generalizing about what you accept as normal. Right? So you think that what is normal to you is normal to everybody. It's not the case all the, all the time. Maybe if you see a dog running to you, it's, uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> right? Yeah, that's yeah. not to run yeah. away. You're going to say, yeah, okay, so I would say what the dog. Run. I heard that's a different. At least 80% run, I say. Can, I can say, right? I mean, that's your, that's your like model. Your what situation, what will be your model? Yeah. No, let's a... not think of it in terms of AI or machine learning only. No, no. Because no, so different models like... for different situation, le let's not uh, make it that specific. The point is that even uh, even if I look, I did not know something and I behaved in a way by running if a dog was running after me, that was due to some survival skill taught to me either by my brain or by something. So I, if it is taught by my brain, then it is still it's taught to let, me in some. Let me let me get back to you know where I was going. I think we are. Making, uh, so in the literature, those who argue, I'm going to argue the opposing point more or less, where whatever that is being presented. So in the literature, there are you know people who are arguing that human you know computer can't be like human brain. Uh, they say that human brain, uh, what, what happens in the human brain is a chemical reaction. And that um, uh, electronic, uh, you know, s things of ones and zeros simply can't represent what is happening, a, you know, in the um, chemical reaction. That um, the things uh, that you capture is ones and zeros or a particular language are far from uh, things that happen in um, uh, uh, different levels of charge or different levels of intensity of signal that your neuron um, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, is exposed to. So that. Now, some of these are facts. We have all have to accept those things as facts. So when you want to argue one way or another, you need to say, that is the case. Here is a different thing. Doesn't mean that we can still not emulate it enough and that uh, outwardly it will look the same. So what you need to do is, um, the, the, the last time I gave you an example of uh, that um, software agent that uh, fooled the AI students, right? That is TA. Uh, so if you can essentially reach that level in broad variety of things that we are talking about, all the variety of things that we can talk about in, um, you know, that human brains can do, and or when the new situations come, you can argue that indeed we can get there. Then you have reached that goal. Until then, you're not. Until then, you're not done. You know, you don't have winning arguments. So that's what you need to be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a uh, uh, there could be an answer to the argument, uh, and it is uh, it depends on how we define things for us for ourselves. In my idea, the computers are. Uh, smart as we are self-aware of, of ourselves. So, for, for example, if we don't have any emotions nowadays in computers and computers cannot express the real emotion that we have, it's because we cannot explain even by ourselves what are the emotions. For example, about the love. How many books, how many explanations of the love we have and we are not uh, coming with the same definition of the love. Or what is sadness? What is happiness? What are they? You know, for example, for logic, for uh, deduction, when we just uh, find them, we just uh, integrate them into the computers, and the computers are better than us in logic and in math, math, mathematical, theoretical things that we understand totally and we are aware of. So uh, the thing for me uh, is that I think that computers are, for, uh, for example, five years behind this real state of art uh, self-awareness of humans, but I think uh, they are going with each other. As we more uh, self-conscious, they are getting more uh, smarter. They are getting smarter. So, that, so I think you kind of pointed out an aspirational thing, but you're not really uh, um, uh, taken it to the level of depth as necessary. That would be the argument you, dis you made a very perfectly rational outline of an argument for uh, towards the, this position that brain is a computer, but you're not gone to the uh, you know the detail level. One thing that you said that I think everybody should recognize is that even when we take uh, a feel emotion or feeling, it is relative. It's relative even for different ones. So uh, uh, his feeling towards his. Um, sweetheart or mother is different than my feeling with the same label for my sweetheart or my mother okay so that's that that is a that meaning you need the ability or capacity to be able to store that differently that means it's not a computer you you can't talk about computer being anything like your brain will be about like you if you have to show that it can be customized to represent an individual brain when each of the there's nothing like uh, there's nothing like a, you know, if you want to really reach the cap capability, then you need, because humans are so nuanced, because, you know, uh, we are so different, because we have such a personal, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, experiences and, and, and uh, feelings, that you've got to also say that computers can also be, can, can also be like that. What it will be, what will be like, you know, now with that, then there's, be, there's a big word that every, you know people can talk about. It's called context. There's another word that we use personalization. If you look at the work that uh, the the thing that I started talking about in terms of uh, big data, and smart data, and um, uh, you know we we key core to that was contextualization, personalization, and and things like that. Then you need to say, um, okay, how are we going to capture the context? And how, when such a way context can be captured, you allow computer do the same way, uh, behave the same way that a human brain would do. Then you will start making, uh, you know, then, then you will put the right meat onto the argument. Right? Uh, can 
can you elaborate a little bit on what are holographic devices and how it relates to the computer? So holographic is any device that uh, works on laser beams. So it takes some kind of a sensory input and stores information, interpret the sensory input and store it in some binary or some kind of form. Something similar to what a brain does. It takes some image. So our brain doesn't care about whether you see your any object, your like the image forming on your retina is upside down or left or right or something like that. What it really importance that the brain has the information that what and it's the inherent structure of the brain, then the star, the hyper structure of the neurons or something that says that how the information need to be processed and what all appropriate signals need to be fired out. And Doctor, about your point. When you say that I have a separate emotions for a sweetheart and I have a separate emotions for my mother, those are two rules, and anything that can be formed into a rule can be can be formed into a computer. But there is the 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 the, the, the my, my argument would be that how whatever that feeling is formed for that other individual is far more complex than something that you have shown can be represented with computers. But it doesn't say that it cannot be represented in a computer. I have not seen where computers where computers have emulated the same way the humans react to different people and with the same different emotions. Right? You know, and, and you see, uh, any feeling that I may have had to another person would be uh, uh, is a is a um, result of so many things. It is it is my it is result of my genetics. It is a result of my environment. It is a result of all the kind of interactions I have had that person over the period of time. It is a result of my um, uh, education, perhaps. Because I learned that oh, you know, no, you know, I. Uh, you know, I read things how challenging it is for the other side to do X, Y, Z, and I know that person did that for me, so I should have more. So I have a informed, you know, because of that initial thing, I consciously <coughs> highlight my, you know, uh, that intensity of that emotion I have. So all those, the, the, the number of things that go are very varied. I, you can't, I can't imagine coming up with a simplistic rule. I can't imagine coming up with a a simplistic training because I would not be able to label every interaction that would have happened either. And but, so, hmm. but it is not. We cannot say that it's not possible. <laughs> but if you have to give. That's why I, the, the reason is, is why, that is whatever, why that you have to argue that it's possible. So I am saying that you it's can't possible. say how. The reason is that the whatever rule, you, points that you rules, have given, then, uh, the, the, then I say no. I don't agree that that is. So whatever points you have stated right now are computational right. interaction. Is computation what we have from the? How is it computation? I when I touch uh, when my when my mother touched me and hugged me and when you know you know when I was fed and the amount of time she spent and uh, uh, what she did sitting next to my. So this uh, is bed. one scenario, right? Where you are saying that this is a kind of way of information interchange. In a computer environment, in a computer scenario, those information interchange will be different. When you compare two things, we say that those properties have the same characteristics, and then you say that these two things are similar and both. No, imagine what would computer be capable of doing to understand all of these interactions that I just outlined. Yeah. We should have several sensors in order to identify the touch initially, and then, and then we we, we should model an understanding system which. Uh, which 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 would identify the the meaning of the touch or the meaning of the action performed by certain human. Yeah, and, and the, that I uh, was there uh, giving me water, and you know, I, uh, she imagined that I was thirsty, thirsty, and, uh, and give me the uh, give me the medicines at the time, and, and also then carried me in the arms, and uh, <laughs> and said soothing words, and. Uh, uh, you know, sang prayers, uh, you know, I mean, and to, I mean, we to sleep and, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I surely agree that we have not reached that level of understanding yet, but 
but uh, but the main thing which we are lacking in in, in development of such understanding system as far as i see it is the is the a good knowledge representation system uh, as i mean we we don't know yet how our uh, how the brain stores information if, if the memory is episodic or semantic or, or more things like that we we don't know all those things or we we do not have yet formulated any logical thing uh, or we have not understanded the whole logics of the brain that and is then it's very all you, you put all this together and basically that's an <laughs> argument <laughs> against the position you have uh, but but uh, let me let me again take this as an opportunity to talk about one specific thing so she talk about knowledge representation that's just a part of the whole thing because uh, the other thing is about all the being able to experience all the modality and such right uh, you know touch is very hard for computers to get a sense of and uh, it, how do you how do you capture in the rules that the mother gave you you know the medication on time uh, whenever you seek and mother you know actually uh, uh, sang the songs to put you to sleep and all those kind of stuff how do you and and there with thousand different ways mother would have assured you and she could have put you in the arm and done this kind of thing or sung and put in the bed kind of, you know and then done that way and and they, you know with different purposes you don't think this has happened after a cultural learning and uh, dissemination this happened over years yeah. and then now we understand that if i think that kid is going to come be comfortable and then sleep Right. So the point is, though, the point is that there is that kind of thing. What, what, what? At least what you have to realize is, if even if computer can do that in future, then there is a long way to go. So you know, the other aspect of the debate that we need to you know could have is that um, you know uh, this guy who he talks about singularity all the time, the guy at Google, who uh, great. So you know. He, talks about what 20 years from now 25 years from now and we're trying to see whether our progress is that fast or all the things are missing other thing on my you know other thing is i'm also trying to open up your minds about the potential computational challenges that you can pursue big companies challenges. but i want to talk about one particular one that uh, just got uh, uh, pointed to here she said that we have not figured out the uh, uh, you know uh, right way to capture the knowledge if i uh, correctly and then you see here um, uh, remember the paper that uh, I wrote with uh, Kartik and uh, uh, Christopher Thomas on uh, semantics for the semantic web, the informal, the formal, and the powerful. But there, that was just a sketching surface. There, there we talk about, okay, here is how you capture informal, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, knowledge, uh, like uh, through um, a vector uh, you know, or, or, or TF-IDF, that's a form of information about a document here right this is a simple thing going from document to understanding video is a big different thing right but let's say then you say okay we have formal logic based uh, representations and you can do so much with that and then you have say we have more so you know a uh, higher order logic that clearly i can talk about the uh, need for explanation as where uh, first order logic won't work i talk about um, uh, second order logic there's a probabilistic, probabilistic and possibilistic logic Right and the soft logic uh, kind of things, uh, and then basis for soft computing, the probabilistic graph models, right? So there are many. There are color patterned models, so many different models for knowledge representation, right? What is, what what I want you to understand is that how limited these are with respect to the kind of scenarios we are coming up with right now. Okay, that 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 that, you see. When you say that you have a digital computer and you have ones and zero and you begin building that, and then you say, suppose you come to a, um, suppose I say, let's for the moment agree with me that, uh, but our neuron uh, actually works on real, for, uh, 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 real numbers, not on zeros and one, but actually, you know, it has, it can capture whatever number, you know, uh, that you have for, for its state. Now try to say how am I going to map that and what is the complexity of mapping that of a thousand, uh, of a, a billion neuron that each can handle real number as opposed to binary states. 
to make this thing equivalent to a computer. Now that's the kind of argument you need to come up with. And to say, okay, we are, we are going so fast that we're still going to reach that in 20 years. Right? Um, so, so the... Um, if you are... So, if you are, you know, one line of argument is that um, biological computing is fundamentally different, fundamentally very complex, and that um, its digital counterpart may be possible, but we are not exactly seen how it may be possible. The other is to say, I'm going to take some discrete thing, a particular thing about learning. And there I can show you, I can do it in my, my you know, new AI technique and such. And I go through any number of them and I can show it distinctly. And then I create, by induction I can say I'll build the, you know, uh, that complex thing. I think the arguments are very different. So, so, so at one level the arguments are all the possible states that you have to represent and get something that is meaningful. But to get something meaningful you still will have to have that knowledge representation or some way to represent how the things come together, some way to represent all these individualized way of expressing feeling, some ways to say there's all these, um, you know, through the appropriate exposure, through the personalization, through the context that, uh, that everything is represented, here is how I'll capture personalization, I'll, here is how I capture contextualization, and then I will be able to uh, look at all those observations coming in as training, to get to this nuanced, you know, broad in state, uh, you know, and representation of uh, a feeling. Well, uh, talking about singularity back in the 1960s, Arthur Clarke and, uh, you know, that movie, Thousand One Space Odyssey, where Hal 9000 was produced, they thought by 2001, singularity would happen. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so in 2001, you know, Steven Spielberg directed, you know, singularity, artificial intelligence. Movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, artificial intelligence. Actually, you know, HAL 9000 and also the Mecca in 2001, artificial intelligence, they could, you know, exhibit back. That movie actually, 2001 Space Odyssey, was directed as early as 1968, Stanley Kubrick. But still, the robot was capable of lip reading, uh, natural language processing, motion reading, you know, all. I recommend everyone to watch that movie. It was very nice movie. So, singularity. Apparently, it didn't happen by 2001. So they said in 2027, and now you know, they are talking about 2045. So I think the most difficult part will be the diversity. You know, Aristotle said the perfect human being is all human beings put together. So, <laughs> like having that uh, nuances, individualized nuances, for instance, you know, every one of us here in this room have our own personalized you know, perception of what's going on around. So how do we capture this one? This is one issue. Another issue is we can think of, for instance, analogical reason. So human beings are, we, as human beings, we are inclined to analogical reason. You know, mm. Just like uh, what Douglas of said. Mm. So let's say yesterday I was reading a paper mm. and I saw a heat map, a graph. Mm. And when I walk down the street, mm. on the streets I see this ice on the floor and it resembles what I saw the other night. So my mind associates this thought. This is called analogical reasoning. So how do we capture this kind of stuff in Tokyo? And also nostalgia. Nostalgia, if, I was thinking yeah, the same. Yeah, nostalgia, yeah. yeah. Nostalgia, how do you if capture nostalgia? If you go nostalgia? to a place, you'll feel like, if you meet a person, you'll feel like, oh, I met this person somewhere else. I have talked the same thing some time back. So, how is that model? I mean, how do how do we get that feeling if we go deja to some place? Nostalgia, yeah, deja vu, deja vu, nostalgia. Yeah. This thing is how do we capture this nuance? So the diversity. So every individual has you know, <coughs> different ways of expressing themselves. See, we're talking of semantics, for instance. The same sentence spoken to the same individual might have totally different meanings. For yes. instance, you can observe, you know, the same sentence will have different meanings to a native speaker and a native speaker. Yes. A native speaker has a different understanding yes. of the same sentence compared yes. to. Sometimes yes. they even yes. use, yes. and also the same words. Yes, I, I mean, uh, I can never appreciate uh, 
in English poem, uh, I can intellectually understand the words, but never appreciate as much as uh, I think others are doing it. A and the nuances I ha get from my mother tongue are just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so those of you who understand, for example, the distinction between pyar and sneha. Yeah. Huh? Uh, it's just, f you know, and there are many other variations of that, right? And, uh, and those nuances, uh, uh, you know, I, I, here's the world only uh, love. That's the only word that is basically, and here uh, that language has, uh, you know, 5, 10, 20 different ways of saying, uh, you know, in different nuances. So, um, those, now I just want to observe this. To me, of all the conversations we had, this um, comment was the most enlightening and most uh, engaging. And one of the part, one of the, one of the strength of this argument and the point that he made has also to do with his knowledge of the history and or the reading and the books. So I once again come back to why you should be reading the books, why should you be building up that experience. Some of you are still reasonably young to do a lot and, and come out at a totally different product than you otherwise would have been. Okay, so I'm, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, it, it's just going to be very different. And do you remember, you know, years before he would have seen 2001, Odyssey or AI, and see how that we bring in. I said that to you also in the past, when I, I've seen some of the most impressive people, um, you know, so I, I uh, or, or very, very good conversationalists. I had a good friend, Marek Rusinkiewicz, he had huge historical knowledge. Uh, Ramesh Jain, a lot of things. You bring up Gutenberg, you bring up this and that. Those really help you make you know powerful arguments because uh, now what happened that when he talks about a book, there is a common understanding, and by just referring to that particular piece of you know literature, he suddenly brought in a pretty comprehensive you know milestone and baseline to build the argument upon, and there is a lot of things possibly say by giving the reference, then what you can simply say by yourself creating the whole argument without the use of that reference. There was some good thing here in that there was an attempt, but not as good as I would have wanted, the attempt of, uh, you know, getting these, um, you know, uh, uh, views of other people. And if, if, if um, I don't know how much of this is simply the effort that they have done in preparation of this, versus them having known it before this. Was it, did, uh, did the, all this come in your preparation for this particular talk, or you already knew all these guys? So, or, or uh, actually, when I read about the Steven Pinker's book review, like on how the mind works, yeah. that's how I hmm. collected already this, all these things. Uh, so, 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 this is the power. And now imagine if he had read uh, how that book uh, five or ten years ago. Then you'd be building this other things, right? The, uh, building, putting the bricks onto the you know, next layer, taking up you know, further, much more, right? Rather than just putting the brick, brick, bricks on the ground, he will be building the thing up, right? The wall. So, so sooner you, you know, get exposed to all the variety of things. This is why Theodora's involvement, you know, just participation. She's not a computer scientist. But it's very en en enriching and enlightening, right? And a lot of pointers to the books and other things that is. And, and so, you know, fi do find the time to, to do that because um, if he had, um, if you had seen these earlier, you would have built even you know, read upon a lot more, and your presentation would have been deeper. Right now, meh. okay, go. Yeah. After share, I'd like to add a point uh, mm. to the previous thing. Like in last class, I mentioned we erase everything from our brain. Mm. It's not possible. What I mean is, if we take our brain, like first born baby brain, like when we born we have less number of neurons and uh, the connections also less. If we take back our brain to that place and if we, again, if we see the person after few years, do you think the two people are same or different? I think they both are going to be different because who we are right now is the accumulation of information from the beginning. 
all the personality biases law like all the affections all those things and it's mostly depend on the information we accumulate and uh, I believe uh, our brain come with some kind of uh, some initial set of algorithms already that's where it starts when we born so let me put it this way. I think what you're making, you're making some very interesting points. It is unclear whether you're making this point very intellectually, and they look nice, actually. Or they are actually well formed with uh, um, references. Uh, I think it is the former, not the latter. But and things could be even stronger if they were, again, Rooted in uh, you know this thing, so so take that message. But I think those arguments are very interesting. Um, I'll just one add and then we move on. Um, so um, I graduated from Bispilani in 1981, and in 2006 we had our what would be that would be 25 year reunion. Oh, no, 1981. Yeah, 25 year reunion. And um, I met many of the guys. Um, we had a batch of 400, 100 showed up. I met, met many of them first time, after more than twice the age that we were when we were. Uh, we were all under 25 in, when we were undergrad, and we were all, you know, about 50 when we met uh, after 25 years, or, or near 50 kind of thing. And then, um, and yet, we had instant connection. I mean, great time, but only. That was only limited to sharing of that shared period. We didn't have to share with each other our other, you know, the, how we grew up differently after that. Only that part, right? So we are that, that complexity in our relationship and our ability to, you know, uh, you know, uh, deal with others. The, the, that is what is worth realizing, right? Uh, so we, in that, that there's a, we had a shared context of having spent five years uh, doing undergrad studies, and uh, you know we, we all had this shared feeling about one cinematic movie or our cultural show and our uh, grueling uh, three exams per course uh, per you know semester uh, thing in, you know curriculum and um, uh, some teachers who had unique characteristics <laughs> that you laugh at or whatever look back at. All those made for a uh, very you know interesting context. Then and, and, and then being able to tunnel through that context, we were we felt very close uh, to each other. We didn't have any expectations of each other. We're not you know person may be highly successful or not highly successful. It doesn't matter to me. The fact that we shared our time together all, is all that mattered to me. We are there for three days of wonderful time together. Nothing more, nothing less. I had no expectations other than having a good time. And that made for a very different interaction versus some other one, where I'm meeting somebody after child of calm, calm, and you know that's a different uh, you know feeling that you may have, right? After, after uh, you know, so you're meeting somebody and you're doing first blind date. That would be a very different context uh, in, in in you know uh, how you interact. <coughs> anyway, you go. So I have a question after all this discussion. So whether are we battling with the thing of human as a computer or brain as a computer? Which, which, which of which stand do you agree on? I think, I think we are, uh, let me just say, for us, I think we just want to limit ourselves to brain as a computer, not human as a computer. But the because discussion that we had right now stays as a human as a computer. Uh, no, you can, you can stand back and say that uh, uh, the role, you can limit yourself to the role of uh, brain in that thing. So uh, that's why, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if you argue that uh, Chatbot could be very uh, smart, uh, uh, and you don't have the uh, uh, you know artificial arms to uh, embrace somebody. That's fine. You know, uh, you don't have to argue about our limbs and uh, our you know way to take the action. Then just this, the decision making. If you limit yourself to just decision making, is okay. The states that the brain is a computer. Hmm? The states that the brain is a computer. Like we don't need. Uh, so the discussion that we had in the very beginning, the from so on, it states that human is a computer, but we are talking on the thing that brain is a computer. No, so okay. there is a difference, I think. There is certain difference, and right. uh, we don't. You don't have to prove that human is a computer. So just uh, you can focus on just the intellectual aspects of it, just the decision making aspect of it. 
it's just you know just a computational equivalent aspect system that's good enough so moving further uh, actually i skipped between some slides because i was on actually we already had 31 slides and it's we don't have time right now so uh, in uh, we move further like uh, there was another quote by Noam Chomsky that states that children are hardwired with universal grammar and kids use language rules and generalizations from the moment they begin to speak. And this kind of thing which I state that it says that brain does have some rule formation, something similar to what rule formation that's, uh, that's prevalent in the computer. And this last uh, box that I showed as basically came from a title from a paper. It says that from babbling towards first words, the emergence of speech in a robot in real-time uh, interactions. And babbling is what we all know is this very starting stage when a child or a kid or a toddler learns to speak. So what, what was the details of that uh, newspaper heading? This is not a newspaper, it's a paper, uh, I think in, I don't know which conference was. But it was a paper that says that from babbling towards first words, the emergence of speech in a robot in real-time interaction. Yeah, that, that is the point. I mean, I'm not, uh, like, on, in title, like, giving some titles, we can say, like, big things, but I want to know what is inside that. What is I can share thing? with you, but, yeah, but this says that babbling, like, considering this uh, abstract which I read from this paper, it says that when we try to learn, try to make an, a robot learn, it's how you start with babbling. And Markovian logic is the first mo model that starts with babbling. It's very basic stage is babbling. That's stated by uh, uh, Dr. Dominguez. So now, moving on through my search, then I started looking at some of the paper, like uh, one article by John Surley. This came up while I was working with Shyansh on FPL when we had this top, uh, guy coming up, Dr. Uh, Dr. Surley. He said that, is mind a program? He says, no, the mind is not a program, a kind of an antique with what Dr. Dennett, uh, Dennett says. But he says that, can brain be simulated? And he said, yes. So um, brain can be simulation, it can be simulated. There is a simulation process. process. Computer is a, is a simulatory system. Hence, we can say the brain is a computer. Now, what, uh, uh, like next, Thing which we talked about like still now we had conversation on brain and brain is a computer and what not things we had uh, this is what I found like are we really after reading all this thing after reading all this text we I came to know that is are we growing through natural selection or it's cultural evolution are we still having a Darwinian way of living or it's something that's we are still going with the cultural evolution because that's how I can we can proceed about how to make computer behave something similar to what brain does. So any, uh, I had a question mark over here, I guess. So if are we having like the cultural evolution or is natural selection? Moving further with uh, this, we state that uh, we find that what is intelligence. And uh, let's ourself ask ourselves a simple question of what is intelligence before we start arguing of if a computer could be an intelligent. So what exactly is intelligence? So definitely, uh, 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 like this kind of way is what a programmatical mind would say that when the ability to learn from experience, solve problems and use language to adapt to new situations where we see that the experience is some kind of function of knowledge and they could together form some kind of features. We have a target of for solving some problems and that's how we can model this thing into a computer and we have a kind of a learning system that we all say that artificial intelligence is going on. Moving further, is intelligence uh, same for every species? Does a dog think that if he, it is more intelligent than human because it has a very good sense compared to humans. So is it like uh, the perception that a dog has that having a sense is, is intelligence? Do we really need some kind, same kind of intelligence than a human being? So that's how I was talking about that when we are comparing two different things, are, do we really want one thing to be kind of an exact clone of other or we want 
that the two things are there and we want to just compare them on the basis of the properties that they have. So the question that we had in the very beginning, that's I have, uh, as very beginning I stated that we are battling on the thing that brain is a computer. So we have brain, we have computer. What are the properties they both have and how similar are those properties intellectually or physically or abstractly? Yes, bro. Yes, bro. So you say deep blue is intelligent? Statistically, yes. Yes. But no. Speed doesn't mean intelligence. Yeah, right? that's why we have defined intelligence. I mean, it, it varies from perspective to perspective. Uh, according to us, I mean, with this point, we argue that statistically, uh, if you if you compare the statistical intelligence of a human and the statistical intelligence of a computer, then Statistical, statistical intelligence is the actual intelligence? That, that is based on your perception. I mean, the question is, is it is intelligence. So I can come up with the word and I can make my yeah, own definitions. Yeah, I mean, that is that if you look at, look at the intelligence in a, in a perspective of statistics or with the, with the statistics per perspective, then yes. No, I agree that uh, computers are faster than humans. Mm -hmm. Statistically, it is faster than humans, yeah. but that doesn't okay. make yeah. a computer intelligent. Okay. Being faster so doesn't... Deep Blue actually it's defeated it's Gary Casper. Mm -hmm. I can say the reason. So, for example, let's say that I'm playing just with uh, the chess champion, Vishwanath Anand. Mm -hmm. I would never beat him because he has, give, he has played that number of times. But let's say two chess champions are playing together. Both of them are humans. At, after some point of time, your brain gets tired and while they are playing, they both are almost or more or less at the same speed in calculating the uh, possibilities and probabilities of the moves. Mm -hmm. But the mission, it is very fast in calculating the probabilities and possibilities and it never gets tired. And that's why in both the cases, it won. Yeah, basically they did a lot of reinforcement learning and uh, uh, iterations of upgrade and everything. Mm -hmm. But speed doesn't mean intelligent. It is way fast in calculating the probabilities and possibilities at that instant and it makes the move accordingly, right? So that doesn't mean it is intelligent. Speed doesn't mean intelligent, right? Intelligence, right? Speed and not getting tired. So what do you can so calculate by your, like how the calculation in a short what amount I of time is intelligence, right? Yeah, most of the time we are talking about uh, question intelligence. Um, but there are, yeah, there are other definitions like emotional intelligence, which is an open. We have to define what is in time. Yeah, I can say it's in the presence of mind. Yeah. I, I mean, so, yeah. <laughs> so, the computer so. doesn't make the move based on the presence of mind. It made the move based on the calculations which is programmed inside like that. The so, calculations can also be decisions, right? Yeah, that's Those the decision which is programmed right? inside that based on the calculation. So yeah. I, don't call, I cannot call it as an intelligent. It, that is not the presence of mind. You already told so, the computer to make this decision on this situation. Mm -hmm. I, I was never thought to... Even, even, a, even a chess player is thought that, right? I mean, even a chess player is trained to be good at chess. And but that by practicing this one is different. Right. So yeah. I never taught the machine how to play chess or make this move or when it this... Yeah, but you right? have given all you the probable, uh, all the moves which you are possible. You give the rules and all possible combinations that the computer can make I mean, or all possible moves... Uh, by what can you are saying, I think that you are referring to intelligence uh, as uh, as uh, as a better understanding of the game and then playing rather than just, just can play. Say, or also so, okay. But I can argue that, I mean... Uh, let, let's consider the exams, like if we are in school and we are kids or something like that. Uh, some students just mug up, I mean, I don't uh, want to offend or something like that. They just remember and then represent, whereas some other students try to understand what is there and then they represent that. So, so do you, how do you differentiate that? Exactly. That this child is not intelligent, not intelligent and that is that is is not intelligent. Let me go so question the kid. Ask me. You boil down to actually the same argument that I brought up. So when the kid comes up and writes, I go and ask the kid about any gender questions related to the subject. The kid won't be able to answer because it basically basically. So, but that. but based on. Uh, it memorized everything I wrote, but uh, that's what I'm saying. That is not intelligence. I, I understand. The definition I, have here. Mm -hmm. I think 
the word should be competitive. So, competitive. Yeah, competitive. So, two persons can be competitive and one person can be pink. So, in the same scenario, if you think like deep blue, mm -hmm. so that is, is, is defeating Gary, mm -hmm. who is a human. Mm -hmm. And see, like, when you take, when you consider a human being, Mm -hmm. He's not hundred percent concentrating only on the task that say if you are so prepared for an exam. Which human have, so that's the human root pole. So so, so you so you what if you die at that point? So much more being intelligent. What if both only deep blue versus deep blue? Then who is yeah. intelligent? Yeah. Um whichever whichever deep blue wins. But I would say that would be a statement. I mean, that would be a mate actually. They would never win one across other because it is also given the same algorithm, same algorithm, same, same speed, same yes. yeah, All mad books are very really many different. Same no, man. Man. But, but then the one that it's takes the step first wins. Because this is the is being competitive doesn't mean being intelligent. Yeah. What was that? Being, being competitive. Mm -hmm. being, being competitive is also one type of competitive. Okay. Being competitive in a specific domain means intelligence, right? In that domain. In that domain, yeah. In the chest, deep blue is intelligent, but then when you take it to the other perspective, it might not be. So, so similarly, I mean, if you consider the whole, you might take a step back, you might not win the battle. So, we take a step back, and strategically, we win the next one. What was the idea? In a go. In a go. In a go. 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 Okay, go. A team might strategically step back, mm -hmm. doesn't feel mm -hmm. at the moment, mm -hmm. and then plan ahead mm -hmm. and win the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a strategy, though. Yeah. yeah. And so that would be more than so if, if you right? just take time t minus one, you de define that I am a loser. Whoever won the game has the win. But in the time t, I won the game strategy. So you're saying that the computer, I mean, a computer will always be programmed to win? Rather yes. than step back that's and why, do something. So that's why I'm saying being competitive is not being being intelligent. Yeah, but what he what he's trying to convey is at one time stamp, mm -hmm. one thing won. Okay, so you, but at another time stamp, another thing won. So you right? wanted deep blue to open to compete with another person for 10 times or no, 20 no, no, times? No, 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 let's not go to the instance of deep blue here. So he's trying to make the point of competitiveness with uh, intelligence. So, if you uh, consider the context that? of competitive, being competitive, they both won uh, at some point of time, but the final winning team who, who played the strategy, they actually won. So, that was intelligent act. So, so the difference between uh, um, winning defining competitiveness and the difference between intelligence defined by winning, that, that's two different things. So it, so I, I think that's the point he's yeah. trying to make. So you mean to say strategy is intelligence? No, so if, if, if that's the point. So how and do uh, the different things? Strategy cannot be programmed. There are so many strategies. Okay. Uh, so, strategy so, so we need to, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, getting to the side issues. It's, uh, these are interesting, I think, I mean, somewhat relevant. Um, uh, I think we at 5 o'clock, so we probably going to, you know, stop today. Um, hopefully we have framed the arguments a little better of what we want to argue and let's continue how we can do it, right?